Field in Pittsburgh. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. Pittsburgh Steelers taking on Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. Right at the convergence of the three rivers on Art Rooney Drive, we welcome you to Heinz Field in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This was the scene just a few moments ago as the Pittsburgh faithful were fired up by the hometown Steelers taking the field. They're all set as they'll match up with the Houston Texans. DeAndre Carter returning it. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Texans taking over offensively, and it is, of course, Deshaun Watson who leads them out at quarterback. When we talk about the best dual quarterbacks in the NFL, don't leave Deshaun Watson out of the conversation. Two straight years, he's been a pro bowler. Excellent numbers again last season with 26 touchdown passes, seven more added on the ground, and firm leadership and control of his Houston Texans team. Now he's looking forward to taking the next step and beating Patrick Mahomes and Lamar Jackson in the playoffs and getting the Houston Texans to a Super Bowl. Let's go, Let's go, this is David Johnson, the former All-Pro, and that is the kind of tackling they want to see all game as he'll lose yardage to start things out. They'll wind up losing three yards here, and that'll make this a second and 13. When coaches stress their defense being physical, they don't just mean the big guys. How about the guys on the outside, the cornerbacks? It's not just their job to patrol the airspace. They can get involved in the run game as well. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Now Watson toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after, and it's third down. They'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one. Force the incompletion, that allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely, frees up your guys elsewhere. Third and long, it's Watson. Open man, the tight end fouls. And he stopped up short of the first as they tackle him down at about the 36. So instead of giving them another third down, they'll decline it brings up four. Now that's smart football right there. You don't even have to really spend a lot of time considering it. Just know that you're probably going to get the ball back. Good job declining that penalty. Brian On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Just a yard return there after a punt of 49. And the Steelers are going to take over first and 10 deep in their own territory. Here's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. Five, 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 five. 
Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. That'll be taken in there by James Washington. Give him nine there on the first down completion. It's a gain of nine. Brings up second and a yard at the 22-yard line. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. They'll run with the NC State man. It's Jalen Samuels. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. He got maybe a half yard at most, but officially they'll be left with a third and two. Third and two. First carry for the 2018 Pro Bowler, James Conner. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. It's a first down following a gain of three. Big conversion. They were backed up deep to start the drive, able to pick up the first. So the goal is at least a first down here, right? Pick up a first down, give yourself some breathing room, and if you have to punt after that, maybe you've helped with field position and you've helped out your defense. And avoided a three and out on their opening drive. First and ten, it's Roethlisberger. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack. And on that one, the protection just broke down. You've got to have that leverage, don't you? We always talk about low man wins in the running game for an offensive lineman versus a defensive lineman. It's essentially the same thing in pass protection. Get lower than that defensive lineman so that you can keep your balance and keep him away from your guy trying to throw the football. Well, they're in some hot water now. After that sack, it's second and 21. They go draw play. This is Samuels. Jalen Samuels, the ball carrier. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. Brings up third Ladies down. and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. Now the pressure comes, and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. Brandon Dunn with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of 7. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. Here's Dustin Colquitt now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Deion 39 Brown. yards on the punt, give him just one yard on the return. And this offense takes over in great shape right at the 50, first and 10. A chance here, Charles, to talk about the Houston Texans before this next drive. They were handed no favors when the schedule came out this year. Kansas City and Baltimore the first two weeks, maybe the two best teams in football. And the Texans indeed lost in KC in the Thursday opener, then fell 33-16 to at home to Baltimore. So... Is this just, hey, that's a bad start because of who you played, or is there a reason for concern with these Houston Texans? I think it's a little bit of both. I think you're exactly right. The schedule, brutal to begin with. And look, they go to Pittsburgh this week, then they're home against Minnesota and Jacksonville. So we know what the schedule has in front of them. Not much that's easy, but let's face it, schedule's one thing. The other part is just the retooling of this team. Remember, they traded away DeAndre Hopkins. This is an offense that's still trying to find itself without their go-to receiver. If somehow 
they can get that figured out and start to gel, I think it's still a team that can make a run in their division because some of these games are losing early. They might be able to make back against their divisional foes. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize it is broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Throwing on third and long. Watson. And that is incomplete. Pass intended for Kenny Stills. Incomplete. And that's exactly what defenses talk about. You've got to find ways to get off the field when you can, especially on third down. And third down defense going to be vital in this game. Able to knock that one away and force a fourth down. Here's Brian Anger now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And no return possible here as they angle this one out of bounds. At their own 29. But the Pittsburgh Steelers right now at 2-0. And, oh, and despite the 2-0 and oh start, you know, the offense hasn't really shown consistency through four quarters of football, getting Big Ben back into the fold. But again, still 2-0. Now, rookie Chase Claypool in week two, he caught the longest touchdown pass thrown by Roethlisberger since way back week 12 of 2018, an 84-yard reception. And also in that win over Denver in week two, Big Ben Charles, he passed Eli Manning for seventh on the all-time passing yards list. And Big Ben has passed his classmate because they were in the same draft together, Eli Manning, for some big numbers over the first two weeks of the season. And how about the running game? They're starting to get it going. In the season opener, James Conner got hurt. And guess what? Benny Snell filled in and had over 100 yards against the Giants. In this game, James Conner bounced back. He had a 100-yard game. But we both know the strength of this team is the defense. And as they like to say, the strength of the pack is the wolf. And they've got a ton of wolves on that defense. And the strength of the wolf is the pack. And you know they play really hard together. This is a team that's near the top in sacks and yardage allowed. How about this now? Home next week against Owen 2 Houston. Play fake to Connor. Now Roethlisberger. Johnson's got it complete. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. We're scoreless after one. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory at the 44-yard line. Play action. It's Roethlisberger. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. It certainly didn't appear that that's where he wanted to go with the ball initially, so he tried to get something out of it by dumping it off to his running back unsuccessfully. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. To throw again is Roethlisberger. Got an open man, it's Washington. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 31-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field. And here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. James Conner, the running back, his intended receiver. And that'll bring up second down. He certainly appeared to take away his first read, and by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. Line of scrimmage, the 31 as they line up second and 10. Ben to throw again. To the right side to Eric Ebron. 
He'll be dropped at the 25 after a gain of six. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Third, good catch there by Eric Ebron, and the Steelers are hoping that they see the 2018 version of this young man. 66 catch, 750 yards, and 13 touchdowns. And that was good enough for second in the league with the Indianapolis Colts. The Steelers like to throw to the tight end. They hope Ebron is the guy. And that will be incomplete. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, you're relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. Well, on for the field goal, a 42-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good. And the Steelers will jump out to a three-zip lead. Steelers three, Texans nothing. So still no touchdowns in the first half, but we do have some action on the scoreboard with the field goal. So maybe now the mentality changes in this game because anytime you can get to the red zone and if you don't come away with six points, you feel like it's a disappointment. In a game like this one, being able to kick field goals means you're right there, and then you're just looking for that big break to take you over the top. Yeah, for the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. And able to get this out to the 25. Take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And here's David Johnson in the Houston offense yet again. Watson will bring up the Texans here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He'll start with a handoff to Johnson. And from the 25, they work this to the 29, a gain of four. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game, trying to establish the inside run, run with toughness now, hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. Oh, the ball is out. Watson lost it. And it's picked up by the Steelers. And he's got Rome. There he goes, left side. And he takes it back to the house. A fumble recovery for a Steelers score. Huge, huge play by the defense, not only to force the fumble, obviously, but to return it for a touchdown. And I know it's no fun for anyone who plays offense, but isn't it fun to see how a defense rallies when there's a fumble return and everyone tries to find someone to block and bring it all the way home? I always like their celebrations because they don't get there that often. No, they're not choreographed very well, usually. <laughs> Boswell now for the extra point. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. So not only the cough up, but then the pick up on the other side, the scoop, and the score the other way. The fumble return for a touchdown. score and this carries into the end zone and Carter deciding not to bring this one out at their own 25 yard line and now out comes Houston not only are they in search of their first score they're in search of their first first down in this ball game as they come up first and ten
to throw is Watson. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Catch there by Kenny Stills, and he joined Houston last season and showed once again, as he has shown throughout his career, he can be a very reliable, good complimentary receiver. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Out of the gun, Watson. It's hauled in by Brandon Cooks. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. The first down carry here for Johnson. Defensively, a solid response after giving up back-to-back -back first downs. You know, it's not just all athleticism from defensive linemen. Let's give them a little credit for their football intelligence as well. Read and react by them, understood the play call, and stacked it up and stuffed the run. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. A shotgun snap for Watson. That's caught by his tight end, Jordan Akins. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 42. It's a first down on a gain of 10. First down. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Watson, he fakes to Johnson and now looks to throw. Being chased out left. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. Pass complete from Watson to Aikens. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call. If you're the offensive coordinator, you like looking at that section a heck of a lot better than trying to figure out third and long. The Steelers now in the nickel here on third down. Back to throw, Watson. And down he goes. They sack him back right around the 41-yard line. A lot of plays like that really hurt play calling. They had a really nice gain on the previous play, but gave about half the yardage back on the sack. Excellent pressure up front. Nowhere to go with the football. Down he goes. Here's Brian Anger now, as he's on to punt for Houston. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. You've got the good size lead. No need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need to do anything crazy. The smart play, go ahead and take your lead into the locker room and then try and add to it in the second half. But there's a part of me that looks at this and says, first half going my way, I have a little bit of a cushion. Let's go ahead and try and extend things. If you've got some good plays drawn up, you might want to think about them right here. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. From the gun, it's Roethlisberger. 
The lightning rod, J.J. Watt with a sack. There's a familiar sight, J.J. Watt with the sack, and he's absolutely a force of nature when he's on the field. Unfortunately, he's only played more than eight games once in the last four seasons, but when he plays full-time, he ends up being in the running every time for NFL Defensive Player of the Year, an award he's won three times in the past. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Now Ben going to give this one to Connor. And he'll just keep two hands on the football as he'll be taken down after a short pickup. And now they'll take a timeout defensively. After the second down play, they burn the timeout, making him sweat out the final few ticks here in the second quarter. Well, the white flag coming out as they line up to kneel on it. The final second ticks by, and that's going to do it for the first half of play. So we have reached halftime with our score 10-0 as we send you down to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much, and welcome everyone to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We just watched a very good first half out of the veteran, Big Ben. His guys lead it by 10 as we send it back out to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Gentlemen. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. second half as the Steelers have the lead and they will also be receiving the football here to start the third quarter. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. First and 10 at their own 29. We focus our attention now on the quarterback, Ben Roethlisberger. And maybe he's starting to wave the white flag a little bit. He's playing pretty well, but the pressure, it's got to him has to find a way to step around it, step through it, or just handle it. Because as you mentioned, he's having a pretty good day overall. Just the hits keep coming and taking those sacks. That's not the way that they want to finish a ball game with their quarterback on the ground so much. Uh, he'd like to stay upright. When he's been upright, he's been pretty good. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. To throw here, Roethlisberger. And he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. Brings up third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Ebron caught left side. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. Whether you're playing West Coast offense or not, one of the 
maxims of the West Coast offense is you're either throwing a touchdown or a check down. In other words, look for the big shot, but be smart. And I think they did exactly that on that play. They didn't get the first down, but they're taking care of the ball well. Yeah, and being rightly cautious with that lead here in the second half. Here's Dustin, Dustin Colquitt Cole now, Cole. as he'll punt it away for the second time. It's a 46-yard punt, two on the return, and the Texans will take over with a first and 10. Here's the Texans' offense now, readying for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. They begin the drive with Johnson, and he stopped immediately there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. You don't see that a ton, do you, with a cornerback coming over to the middle of the field to make a run tackle. That's someone with a ton of confidence to feel like nothing is pressuring him on his side of the field, sees that the ball's moved to the middle, and just sprints over there to help out. He ends up getting the tackle. Well played. And now he'll tuck it and run. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. How about a tip of the cap to the defense? They're working against a very mobile quarterback, but all day long they've kept him under wraps. And on that play, they held him to a short gain. The third down now. Those last two plays indicative of how things have gone for them. Just nowhere to go on the ground and struggling to put up points. Finding fouls complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain of 26 on the third down conversion. Well, sometimes our pregame meetings do pay off, don't they? What do the guys in the locker room call it? Well, they said it with a chuckle. They called him old reliable. Yeah, that means he doesn't move quite as fast as he used to, but he still knows all the tricks, doesn't he? Even that little gentle push off in order to get open, he finds a way to pick up a first down. Now a first down throw, Watson. He's got his tight end, it's Fells. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I don't care what sport you're playing, everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent game. Looking to throw again on second down. Watson, and he'll find Aikens there, complete. And he'll get it down here to the 43. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. From the 38, Watson, and that's complete to Cooks. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag Great on the field. Offense. Come on, man. So a decent gain, but all for naught on the penalty. It's Still too bad, down. isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, the guys who just gave up that play. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. From the gun, here's Watson. Stepping up, he'll try and run. He'll end up getting five out of that, but now they're looking at third down. Taken down at the 43-yard line. Five yards on the play. 
And it's third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. This is caught. It's Cooks. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 22-yard line. Catch there by Brandon Cooks. It's hard to believe that he's on his fourth team in five years because he's produced everywhere that he's been. Houston hoping to see the Brandon Cooks that they saw in New Orleans, in New England, and in Los Angeles. 2019, though, was his first year under 1,000 yards since 2014. He's looking for a bounce back. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. From the gun, a run for Johnson. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Brings up second and 11 at the 23-yard line. Second and 11 now. Watson complete. It's Johnson. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. It's a gain of nine yards. And that'll make it third down. Oh, I came to my feet on that one. I thought he was getting close to breaking that one big. But in the end, give some credit to the defense. Finding a way to get to him and forcing a third down. The Texans on third down, two for five to this point. Here it's third and two. From the gun, Watson. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. I think that was a good job there defensively. They did allow them to drive all the way downfield, but once they got their backs to the goal line, they really turned up the pressure. Yeah, they let them get all the way down here. Now the field shrinks. They've struggled to convert, and that last incompletion brings up fourth. Fairbairn able to put this one through, and they get themselves on the board here. It's 10-3. to three. Texans three. All right, so they needed two scores to get back in the game. The field goal there, maybe not exactly what they wanted, but the necessary first step. There's still time remaining, and there's enough time to get it done. They've got to get at the least a three and out here to get the ball back, preferably a takeaway. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. Taken in the end zone. And he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Their lead back down to one score after the field goal a moment ago. So they'll be looking to string together a few first downs, likely on the ground as they begin first and 10. And the Steelers with a first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. He'll throw from the gun and hitting Juju on the slant. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. 
Well, it may seem a little unorthodox to some people. Got the lead, fourth quarter, yet he's still firing away. I think he believes that's the best way to go ahead and win the game. Yeah, a lot of coaches say, let's just run the football, be conservative. He's sticking to his game plan. Now, that is his game, and that's what they're going to ride. The big play to start him out has him at the 45 already. Out of the gun, it's Roethlisberger. Washington's got it. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 12 yards that time into Pittsburgh first. Another nice pick up through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect them to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swings, slants, quick outs, things that they consider safe. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. From the shotgun, it's Roethlisberger. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Under four to go now as the clock runs and they come up on second down. Now Roethlisberger getting this one into the hands of Smith-Schuster. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 22-yard line. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. On first and ten, it's Roethlisberger. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Johnson was the intended receiver. That'll bring up second down. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. So after the incompletion, second and ten from the 22. To throw again is Roethlisberger. And his throw here is incomplete. Johnson the intended target. And now it's third down. This drive, which was going so smoothly, all of a sudden it's a little bit of a roadblock here with two straight incompletions. Yeah, apparently this defense has had enough. Apparently they're saying no more. We're making a stand right here, right now. But it is third and ten. They've got to get after him one more time. Another incompletion would certainly be ideal defensively. A big play now. This is third and ten. Throwing again, it's Roethlisberger. Under pressure, and he'll go down. Back at the 26-yard line. Zach Cunningham rolling in to get the sack. Got to give him points for the attempt, but there's just a wave of pressure there. A host of people in the area. Evades a few, but couldn't evade all of them. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to perhaps salt this one away. And Boswell's kick is good. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. Steelers 13, Texans 3. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Here's Carter now on the return. And they'll get him down inside the 30 at the 27. Carter on the return. So Texans take over first and 10. So Deshaun Watson in the offense. Down by 10, 223 to play. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. <laughs> On 
on first and 10. Watson. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Second and 10 now from the 27. Throwing again is Watson. Screenplay, Johnson. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. Two yards the loss, and now third and 12. Two yards, and it's third down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They face a third down now as they try to find a late score. Operating from the gun, Watson. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. We've seen that the deep ball has been a part of their game plan all afternoon, but they've had trouble hooking up on it, unable to successfully find the end zone over the top. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. Now they go for it on fourth, but this one is going to wind up incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Steelers, they're going to take over an excellent field position. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> they're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. On first and 10 is Connor. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Now the Texans will burn the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Again, it's Connor. And he'll be taken down near the 20 at the 21. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Roethlisberger will hand to Connor, and he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the right hash, it's a 41-yard attempt. Boswell's kick is good. And the lead stretches. 16 to 3 now. Makes the score. Steelers 16. Texans 3. 
so they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. After the successful field goal try, here's Boswell to send it away. Here's Carter now on the return. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. At their own 25-yard line. Houston set to take over. And last time went for it on fourth, didn't get it. Let's see if they can pick themselves up off the mat and do better this go around. Sometimes I have this vision of coaches writing notes to themselves before a game. And sometimes that note says, be aggressive, stay aggressive. Maybe that's what we saw in the last possession. Yeah, they were very aggressive. This time, will it result in points? We'll find out. On first down, it's Watson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That's a good way to start the drive. 17 yards and a first down. Good catch there by Randall Cobb. We know him as a longtime Packer who spent last season in Dallas. Now he brings his veteran presence to Houston, where he can help the young quarterback, Deshaun Watson, continue to develop. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Randall Cobb, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. To throw again, Watson. Johnson's got it complete. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. He's going to let it fly. And he takes this one into the end zone, and all of a sudden, here in the final minute, things get a little bit tighter. No, we're not cheering. No, we're not rooting. But I am excited about this, and I know you are too. We got a ball game again after that big-time strike. Big-time strike, and you are right. Don't go anywhere yet. This thing's not done. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. The drive summary, four plays, 75 yards. And the result, a Houston touchdown. So still a small chance here with a little over 30 seconds to go, but they're definitely going to need this one to bounce their way. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a camper on this one. They had to go for it with no timeouts remaining, though, now. This one's as good as over. They gave it an effort. They tried their best, did everything they could to try and get the ball on the onside kick. You're exactly right. They had to try it. It was their only option. And now this game is done. Just take it, kneel, and call it a day. Pittsburgh set to take over again on offense. And they've got this one in hand. No timeouts remaining defensively, so this one should just be one kneel and then handshakes. Ah! 
Roethlisberger dropping to a knee, and that ought to do it. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So this one in the win column for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And it wasn't really always pretty. They had their bumps and bruises. Really, both sides did, but they did what they needed to do at home to get the win. Yeah, they really had to grind this one out, didn't they? Because nothing came easy. Every snap was a major league brawl. They had to win at the line of scrimmage, win downfield. They got all those things accomplished. But to win a close one like this, you know, every team wants to be physical. We've heard that a million times, right? But those who are mentally tough, those are the teams that you have to deal with in the playoffs. This was that type of a game. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. The Steelers are winners as we say so long from Heinz Field.